Friday night in Belgrade. Serbian police are about to gate crash a private party. They're looking for drugs and guns, the hard currency of Serbia's mafia economy. The gate crashers are heavily armed and not welcome. It's all part of a tough new approach to organized crime, one of the nastiest legacies of the Milosevic era. The police action is aimed at mafia bosses who grew rich on the battlefields of Croatia and Bosnia. In recent years, they've turned on each other. Amid the murders and massacres, other darker crimes came to light. This badly decayed body is all that remains of one of Slobodan Milosevic's oldest friends, Ivan Stambolic, a former Yugoslav president. Mafia killers kept Stambolic waiting at the graveside while they dug a bigger hole and then shot him in the head. In March this year, the government decided to act. Every state has its mafia. The problem here, though, is that the mafia wanted their own state. We could not allow Serbia to become a kind of European Colombia. The Gordian knot had to be cut. But the gangsters struck first. Prime Minister Zoran Djindjic, the man everyone hoped would transform Serbia, was shot dead, killing the hopes of millions of Serbs and of Western governments. Mourners flooded the streets of Belgrade to remember their fallen leader, a man who'd promised to beat the Mafia and send its leaders to The Hague on war crimes charges. All the signs suggest that Djindjic's murder on Wednesday, March the 12th, was an inside job. As the Prime Minister drove towards Parliament, three gunmen gained access to a nearby building. Zoran Djindjic, on crutches after a football injury, was an easy target. His head of security was off work. Someone had turned off the CCTV cameras. As Djindjic stepped out of his car, a bullet pierced his heart, a symbol of how deeply the Mafia had penetrated Serbian life. The gangsters found out what Djindjic was going to do, thanks to their spies in the police. So they pulled the trigger first. It was only a matter of days before we were going to act, but they were quicker than us. They thought that by murdering the Prime Minister, they would provoke a coup d'etat and change the government. And that way, they would save themselves from being arrested. Instead, Zoran Djindjic's death provoked a showdown with organized crime, exposing their multi-million pound drug deals, their vast private armories and their links to international crime. An incredible 10,000 people were arrested, the biggest police operation Serbia's ever seen. More than 3,000 now face charges, many of them members of Serbia's most powerful mafia gang, the Zemun clan. 45 people are accused of plotting to kill the prime minister, including several secret service agents and a top army officer. One man who's glad to see the gangsters behind bars is Miroslav Todorovic, a former judge who tried several mafia cases. He made the mistake of denouncing the Zemun gang on national television. The next day, he was abducted right outside Serbia's Supreme Court and taken to the gang's headquarters in West Belgrade. The house has been demolished, but Todorovic will never forget his encounter with the gang's leader, Dusan Spasojevic. This is the first time he's spoken on television about his ordeal. He made me open my mouth. As I did so, he pushed the gun into my mouth and said, 
Good, good. With such a mouth and this weapon, you can't miss. Todorovic feared he would not leave the house alive. The gang leader took him down to this empty swimming pool and at gunpoint ordered him to strip and enter the pool. When a man experiences such humiliation, so big and so horrible, many other things lose their importance. I'm in my 60s and I was naked at the mercy of a murderer. It's devastating. Todorovic was released. Police shot dead his torturers two months ago when they raided a Zemun gang safe house looking for Jinjic's killers. Serb authorities say the two men were resisting arrest. But like many things in Belgrade, the attack on organized crime isn't quite what it seems. One of the leading suspects has mysteriously gone missing and important evidence of the Mafia's links with high-level politicians and police officers has been destroyed. The most damning claim, though, is that the government here has simply destroyed one Mafia network with the help of another rival gang. And that's because the Mafia have such a grip on Serb society, from football to pop music. One of Serbia's most popular singers, Setsa, is the widow of the indicted war criminal Arkan. Her music videos reflect the gangster culture of guns and revenge killings. Setsa herself has not been spared, accused of tax fraud and possessing weapons. Football, too, is caught in the Mafia's net. Six league presidents have been murdered. Setsa is president of FC Obolic, one of Serbia's leading teams. The club's now under investigation for alleged money laundering. Obolic's acting president insists the club and Setsa are innocent, the target of rival interests who want to take over their team. <laughs> She started a hunger strike because she feels that there's a hidden agenda behind her arrest. We've begged her to take food. She's refused. She says, and I quote, I think they're going to send me to The Hague for the mistakes my husband Arkan made. If that's their aim, they'd better get a move on. Few people can escape the long shadow of Belgrade's gangs, even Serbia's most popular politician. Former Yugoslav president Vojislav Koštunica has been on the back foot since two of his advisers were accused of meeting Jindic's killers days before his murder. Koštunica says the government's pursuing a political vendetta against his advisers. I consider both of them to be political prisoners. They had nothing to do with that. Uh, assassination of Prime Minister Jindic. Government has given already some signs, some proofs that it has intentions to use this state of emergency and assassination of Prime Minister uh, Jindic in order to get rid of its uh, political rivals. Such questions will now be decided by Serbia's prosecutors and judges, here discussing the legal fight against organized crime. It'll be a massive task, not least because dozens of top judges and prosecutors have been removed during the state of emergency. Serbia's justice minister is under pressure to get results, so he's taken a leaf out of the Italian law book. We are following the practices of different countries. First of all, Italy, which is the leading country in the fight against organized crime. They've got the special police, the special prosecutor, the special courts. And in a way, we have incorporated the experience of the Italian judiciary into our own. A former military court is being prepared for the Mafia trials, complete with bulletproof glass cages for the accused. Human rights campaigners say the trials, due to start in September, will only succeed if witnesses are properly protected, and that will cost money.
it will have problems, enormous problems, because they will have problems with witnesses, they will have problems with judges, with lawyers, because all these professions suffer uh, the problems that we have all over. And of course, witness will have to be protected, and this is going to be a big problem uh, for the country as we are, where safety is not really so highly ranking. On the surface, Belgrade seems a lot more prosperous now than in the war years. There are even hints that the former pariah state could join the EU and NATO. But before all that can happen, Serbia needs more outside help to tackle the Mafia's main sources of income, smuggling, extortion and human trafficking. The mobsters are acting like real globalizers. They don't know any boundaries and they are united all over the planet. And that's why we have to fight them globally, united and cooperating. I'm asking the British government and other European nations, including the United States and other developed countries, to help our police customs and judiciary to become a firm and safe barrier against organized crime. Removing the Milosevic regime then hasn't solved all of Serbia's problems. In some ways, it's made them worse. Unless the outside world offers more cash aid, the crime and corruption which has engulfed Belgrade could soon become this country's biggest export.